Hey, hey, welcome to the show. Every Sunday afternoon, we answer your home improvement questions. My name is Jared Malik. Sitting next to me is my father, Ken. Hey, uh, everyone. Surprise, surprise. The show is all about your questions, so we're looking forward to your calls. Where are you? You're in the house. It's called In the House, all about home improvement and construction. If you have a project that you're working on and you want to know how to get to the next step, or if there's something in the house you need to fix, you want to know how to get started with it, well, this is the place to be. Whether it's a structural question, electrical, plumbing, anything having to do with home improvement, uh, it's okay to give us a call, 407-297-9696, toll-free, 855 855- Two nine seven nine six nine six. Maybe you're thinking about doing an addition this year and you want to know how to coordinate it, how to schedule it, how to decide what addition to do. Uh, maybe you're thinking about uh, remodeling your bathroom. Maybe you have a leaky faucet. You want to know how to stop it. Um, perhaps uh, you have a leak in your roof and you want to know how to fix that. Well, you can give us a call 407-297-9696, toll free 855 855- Two nine seven nine six nine six. Ken and I uh, own a local business called Universal Roof and Contracting. We're uh, roofing and building contractors, and we've been uh, helping Central Florida homeowners uh, for a long time with their roofing and construction needs. And throughout the week, we uh, we get to visit with uh, with great homeowners. And then every week uh, for the last fourteen years, we come in and answer your home improvement questions. And so, if if you have one, uh, we'd uh, welcome it today. Four zero seven two nine seven nine six nine six or toll-free 855-297-9696. All right, a bunch of stuff on our talk agenda today between the phone calls. Um, we, uh, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, the upcoming, uh, upcoming Orlando Home and Garden Show. January 18th through the 20th, uh, we are going to be at the Home and Garden Show this one actually combines with the uh, with the boat show as well, which I think is a is a pretty cool idea, and uh, should be uh, should be a lot of fun. We're going to be out there January eighteenth through the twentieth. Uh, we also have an email question uh, that uh, that we need to get to a little bit later on. Uh, the email com- uh, comes to us from uh, an article that we wrote in uh, this latest edition of the Lake Mary Healthy Living magazine. Uh, they asked us a little bit ago to if we would be one of their expert uh, writers, and uh, so on a monthly or bi monthly basis, we um, we will uh, uh, write an article uh, having to do with something home improvement uh, for uh, Lake Mary Healthy Living magazine, and uh, and one of the the great readers of that magazine had emailed a, us a question, so we're going to talk about uh, that email, and then we're going to answer it as well. And that email is actually about something that might be concerning you. Um, and it's uh, uh, it's actually a, a, a type of electrical panel uh, that has been known to cause fires, and uh, and so um, uh, so you're we not going to talked about a lot of that last week uh, or a week or two ago uh, about that. You know what I found this last week, and people had called uh, and I had an opportunity to go out uh, last week. Is a lot of people that were having problems with their roofs. In other words, they were leaking, thinking, "Hey, I need to replace my roof." I've it seems like it's leaked on and off since this last summer. And I get out there and look at them, and both uh, several of these people that I visited were all ready to take all their savings that they had acquired. Of course, they hadn't been on their roof uh, and asked me to take a look at it and give them an estimate, and they were taking estimates. And what was amazing to me is all three of these people uh, or three of three of the people had storm damage on the roof, had other contractors out and they didn't see the storm damage. I I was just amazed that Mm -hmm. they didn't bring it to the attention of the homeowner, one with hail and two with wind damage. And I said, you know, well, that's, you know, think about it for a minute. If you have a car and you, you know, you leave it in the parking lot, you go in the store and you get uh, some food or something and, and you're shopping or you're a Home Depot or anywhere. I don't care where you are. And you come back out and somebody's wrecked your car. You're sure going to call your insurance company because it's not that when uh, and the same thing happens uh, on a roof. It's an act of God. And when you get a problem, you, you really do need to get uh, someone that understands uh, what storm damage is what the insurance company's responsibility is. And if Jared and I can help you with that, uh, or if you're having that same situation, give us a call today and we'll talk about it on the air and, 
if we can't help you. Sounds good. Let's go straight to the phones. Let's talk to Marla. Marla, you're in the house. Go ahead. Hey, Marla. Thanks for your call. Hi. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, an addition on the back of our house, and every couple of years we have to recalk the seam where the old meets the new. Okay. Is this a normal process, and what's that? Use on it. When you when you say that you have to caulk the seam, where uh, are you talking about? Like where the block meets? Or are you talking up on the roof area, or what? Where the block where the block meets okay. along the side walls. And so is the is the new addition uh, made of block, and the old home made of block as well? Yes. And then is it separating at all there, or is it? Um, it, it does seem to have a separation there, and that's why we you know been kind of caulking that area. Sure. And um, how wide would you say the separation is at this point? Oh, it, it's almost like a small hairline crack. Okay. And, I mean, I couldn't put a pencil in there. Okay. Or... And is there is there any other cracking that you're noticing uh, throughout the block on the new addition? Um, no. Okay. Not... Okay. So this is, you know, this is pretty common. I mean, the thing is, is that when you do an addition, because it's done at a separate time and, and it's not constructed to be um, uh, uh, interwoven uh, with the existing structure, uh, it's very common for you to get a slight separation or slight settling in that, uh, in that new addition. And so I, I, the point where I would get concerned is if you start getting cracking in in the block uh, of the new addition or if it's separating to the point you know when you get into like quarter inch and 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 you know and larger you know that's when i start to get concerned uh with a separation but what you what you need to do is exactly what you're doing which is uh seal that transition now when you when it comes to sealants and caulkings you want to make sure that you use good quality sealants and caulking. Um, you know, there's the the tubes of caulking that you can buy for you know a dollar ninety five a tube, and then there's ones that are fifteen to twenty dollars a tube, and, and and so you you typically want to use something that is better. It's going to be more flexible. It doesn't dry out as quickly. Um, and so, so I would recommend that. Also, a uh, good sponsor to the show, QuickCrete, um, they actually have some good patching compounds as well and crack fillers um, and um, uh, that are a little bit more durable than what just a regular caulking would be. And so okay. you may want to actually go to something like that. Um, if you go to the, their website, or, or actually if you go to ours as well, in com, there's a link there for QuickCrete, uh, which is Q U I C K. R E T E, um, uh, quickcrete.com, then, uh, then you can see, you know, some of the products that they have. They, uh, you can actually, um, you know, go through all the different products and, and see the all different right. ones. So, now I have a, a question because we're going to be repainting. Mm-hmm. And I've heard of some of these paints that are like a, you know, a lifetime warranty elastic covering. Right. Would that be something that would be beneficial for, for this type of process? Uh, I, uh, first of all, I don't think that there's anything that's that's really lifetime when it comes to exterior yeah. coatings or exterior paintings. So the the good thing that those companies do is that they do a lot of good preparation and they put multiple steps on. So the, preparation is key when it comes to a good paint job. So um, I I personally am not a big fan of of the the lifetime coating stuff. I I, I don't think that it will really last a lifetime. Um, so I don't think that it's necessarily worth the the additional expense. But multi doing good preparation, make sure you use a, a, a caulking or sealant that is paintable so that that way it will actually adhere to it. And then, uh, you know, doing a, um, a, a good pressure washing, good cleaning, and then using multiple layers. Go ahead and put, you know, two or three coats on uh, at the same time that you paint. Marla, what part of town do you live? Um, East Orlando. Uh Give us a call at the office. At, uh, I'd, I'd like to come out and see what you're, what's going on with it uh, okay. for you. Uh, and the office number is 407-295-7403. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, you bet. very much for your yeah. time. You Thanks, Marla. Thank appreciate your call. Number here, 407-297-9696. Toll free, 855 855- Two nine seven nine six nine six. All right, let's go to Jay in Longwood. Jay, you're in the house. Go ahead. Hey, Jay. This is Jerry. Uh, Hi, Jerry. I've got a Oak Ridge Pro Thirty shingles on a house. They've mm-hmm. been on there a little over eight and a half years now. Yeah. I first contacted uh, Oak, the uh, Owens Corning people back last summer, 
and initially they had me send them samples of the shingles, which they have tested, determined mm-hmm. to be defective. The roofer that came out said the nails had all rusted off, the heads and the nails themselves, so of course it's leaking through the nail holes. Mm. Owens Corning has acknowledged defective shingles. They didn't seal down as they should. Okay. But they only stepped up and offered initially a prorated replacement on the shingles. They did, after uh, arguing with that, come back and offer 100% replacement on the shingles. But that's about 20% of the cost of the installation. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and I just wondered if you'd had any experience. I had one uh, roofer come out that said he won't even put uh, won't even put Owens Corning on the roof because he's had so many problems with their brand and customer service. Yeah. Yeah, if if you would have found it within five years of the install date, it would have been a lot better. Um, their their warranty is better for the first five years than than it is the rest of the time. It does start prorating. Uh, they do cover more material and labor. And and I did I have seen um, not even just with that manufacturer, but uh, in that time frame, of, you know, eight years ago. Uh, there was a lot of work that was being done, and and it's also when petroleum prices were were skyrocketing, and so we have seen in the uh, you know in the five to eight year ago time frame, uh, a lot of manufacturers have manufacturer defects uh, in them, and and um, so you know the I've I have had some um, uh, clients be successful in uh, getting an attorney involved and then them agreeing to pay additional amounts um, but you know that's you know it was a fight uh, along the way but anybody um, you would suggest in the way of an attorney that's been there and done that yeah uh, mark nation of the nation law firm great okay. guy does a show here on wdbo yeah, and, with his name in fact someone else had suggested calling him but i didn't know if he'd ever dealt with that type issue yeah, knowing so. he's had that specific issue makes it great i'll be in touch with him tomorrow yeah the the extent you know what you want to do is whenever i see a um a defect case uh, i always we have a little spreadsheet in our office that we that we've created as a result of this that that goes through the process of of what it is that they should pay even just according to the terms of their of their own warranty mm-hmm. um and um we do like a little comparison of best case and worst case scenario uh, as to what they should pay and you know to determine if they've paid you the right amount so we wouldn't mind coming out and going over that with you in advance uh, just to make sure that what they've given you is what they at least should be giving you by the by the terms of the warranty so okay. and and then in regards to replacement did they give you cash or did they give you a voucher for new shingles they offered a voucher for new shingles. Yeah, so and it's pretty common. Um, so I, I don't think, I, in general, I don't have anything against Owens Corning. I, I actually think you know they're one of the major manufacturers. It's not what I would put on my house. It's not what I did put on my house. Um, uh, but if I had a voucher for those, uh, I would use them before I would buy all new shingles. Um, well, I haven't accepted the voucher yet. This I, my business got very busy, and I didn't have time for, to, to pursue it. Yeah. But my intention was to either uh, mount a web campaign of customer service failure or so forth, or to contact an attorney. And I've just been too busy till now, yeah. so it's been about five months ago. Yeah. But yeah. I'll once you sign the release, Nation. yeah. Once you sign the release, there's nothing they can do. So. Right. I've, I haven't signed anything at this point, so Good. I'm ahead of that game. All right, buddy. Good luck with that. Thank Let you. us know if there's anything we can do along the way. Yeah, we'd like to help. All right, so I wanted to uh, read an email question. This comes to us from a recent article we wrote uh, in Lake Mary Healthy Living. Uh, We uh, have a partnership with them. They had asked us to uh, write an article uh, for their magazine. And uh, so uh, every couple months, uh, we will a uh, new article will be put in there. The last one um, uh, was uh, about smart home technology. Uh, and um, so if you get a chance, uh, definitely pick up uh, uh, the latest issue of Lake Mary Healthy Living magazine. And we had invited uh, the readers of that magazine to uh, submit an email question. So here it goes. Uh, this is uh, from Judy. Uh, She wrote, I recently read the article on smart homes in your latest magazine. It was very interesting. I listened to Mr. Mellick on the radio and have been meaning to call in with a question. I saw in the article that he was taking email questions, so I figured I would just ask this way. My home was built in the early 1980s. Uh, Quite a few of my neighbors have been replacing their electrical panels. All of the houses in my neighborhood have Federal Pacific electrical panels. I've heard that they are dangerous is this true or is it not? One of my neighbors told me it was just a ploy by the power companies. Uh, thank you in advance for the answer, Judy. And well, thank you for the email question, Judy. I appreciate that. Um, 
Yeah, this is this is extremely common, and and, uh, and a lot of times it is whole neighborhoods that have it. Uh, the Federal Pacific Electric Company was uh, manufacturing circuit breaker panels uh, from the 1950s through the 1980s, uh, mid to late 1980s. Uh, they were really installed everywhere throughout the country, not just uh, here in Florida. Uh, and as the years passed, uh, both electricians and home inpe- inspectors found that the Federal Pacific Electrical Panels just failed to provide the proper protection. Um, there was also a class action lawsuit. Uh, it was uh, in New Jersey, if I remember correctly. And um, uh, they had stated uh, in the class action lawsuit that uh, that the Federal Pacific Electric Company had uh, – uh, violated the Consumer Fraud Act uh, because they knowingly uh, uh, manufactured and distributed circuit breakers which didn't meet the UL standards. So what happens basically with the panels is that when a, um, a breaker will actually fail to trip, uh, what's supposed to happen is if uh, too much electricity goes in, the, the, uh, the, uh, it trips, which stops the elect- uh, electric current from passing through it. Uh, well, what happens is is that uh, some of the circuit breakers and specific panels the, of Federal Pacific uh, don't actually trip the breaker. That electricity continues to move through, and uh, there is no doubt that fires have been started uh, as a result of the Federal Pacific um, uh, panels. So uh, my suggestion is to have it replaced uh, have an electrician come out and, and replace that panel. I literally just went through this at, at my house. Uh, I purchased a house uh, in uh, July, and uh, during the home inspection uh, that I had done, uh, we discovered that we did have a Federal Pacific electric panel. Wow. And, and actually, um, my insurance company, my homeowner's insurance, required that I change that before they would take me on as a, uh, uh, as a, as a policy. And this is actually extremely... Extremely common. Uh, a lot of insurance companies, if they discover that you have a Federal Pacific uh, electrical panel uh, during the process of a four-point inspection, uh, they will require you to replace that electrical panel before uh, they will insure you. Um, so, Good to know information. Yeah. So it is um, it, it is a problem. If you do have a Federal Pacific panel, I do recommend that you go ahead and, and uh, call an electrician and have it replaced. Um, and, uh, the, the guy that, uh, that, that replaced mine is a, is a good friend of mine. Um, and, uh, so if you contact me, then I'll give you his contact information as well. Uh, his name is Steel Mycroft with, uh, Wallstab Electric. And, uh, he replaced the panel at my house, did a, did a phenomenal job. I ended up actually moving my electrical panel, uh, at the same time, uh, just because I wanted it in a, in a different area of my house. But, um, uh, but, uh, normally it's, it's, uh, probably anywhere between 700 and $1,200 to replace that, uh, that electric panel. Um, and as I said, Steele did a good job at my house. His, and his number, if you want to reach him, is 407-617-0842. Again, 407-617-0842. But whether it's him or any electrician, I, I do recommend that you have that uh, Federal Pacific Electric Panel replaced. If you want more information on it as well, uh, we'll put a link up on our site. Um, uh, the, the, the site that I think that has uh, a lot of really good information uh, for this whole process is uh, called inspectopedia.com, and we'll put a link on our site uh, if you want a, more information about uh, – and some of the pictures are pretty interesting, too, of the different fires that have started as a result. So thank you, Judy, for that email question, and uh, thanks to Lake Mary Healthy Living uh, for the partnership uh, with them. All right, if you want to call us now with your home improvement questions, 407-297-9696, toll-free, 855-297-9696. Let's go to John in Daytona. John, you're in the house. Hey, John, thanks for your call. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Well, great. Thanks, John. Great. I um, uh, My house was built in 1992, and it's got uh, the soffit on it is um, the type of soffit that's, I mean, it's just, constantly is holes everywhere I mean, it's almost like a grill uh, top but it's stained pretty bad and um, i'm afraid to, i've washed it over the years uh delicately but i'm afraid to pressure wash it because i don't want to have water getting up into the insulation sure. you know um, on the other side um my question is is uh how hard is that to replace that 
Sure. How? What type of what type of material is the soffit made of? It's al- aluminum. Aluminum. Okay. And uh, uh, the fascia is also, and of course, attached to the fascia is the gutter. So I guess the next question, <laughs> the question with how hard it is, is, is does that fascia just? Uh, I mean, the soffit, does it just pop up in there and then lay back down, or do I have to physically take off everything else to get to it? Well, there's a, there's typically there's going to be a J-channel on the inside, which, which holds those soffit panels in place. Um, so you just basically pull off that J-channel and pull that soffit out. Now, the fascia is something else. There's two different ways that you can apply the soffit on the fascia side. One of them is, is that it actually connect the fascia itself just kind of holds it in place. The other way is if there's a J-channel on the uh, on the fascia, on the wood fascia or the subfascia side, uh, and then the fascia covering just kind of clicks over the top of it. Do you know? Does your existing aluminum fascia hold the soffit panels in place? I believe it just they just it lays up on top of the. <clears throat> I believe there's like a it's like an L that comes down, and mm-hmm. I believe the soffit lays on okay. not only there but it lays on uh, on two. Um, uh, if you're looking. Uh, so let's use it directional, for example. Mm-hmm. North south would be laying that way, and then on the west side of it would be laying on the fascia. Okay, so you know, so I, I mean, yeah, yeah, the, I, under, I understand. Fascia. So it, the soffit and fascia is pretty easy to replace. Um, it, most of the time, you would have to replace the gutters at the same time, or at least detach and reset them. Well, see, that's a that the the, the issue I have here is the fascia is in great shape. It's just the soffit that's staying. The fascia, I've always been able to maintain okay. it very well. How, how far I down? Always fresh wash in. Hey, John, how far uh, down does the fascia come? Is it a from the soffit? Is it an inch or so like that, or? Mm, I from the do from you the say, ask that again from the from the actual soffit itself. How far does the fascia extend below? The uh, the soffit. Um, actually, it's laying right on laying top on of it. it. Yeah. So the question. So if you send us a picture, I can tell you. Or if you just get okay. quotes, then you can see whether or not we can replace the soffit without pulling off the fascia. Right. There's cases where we are able to, and then there's cases cases where we're not. So okay. yeah, the the whatever installer you have come out um, uh, would be able to determine that pretty easily. Uh, just by taking a look at it, but we do. I, I personally like the um, the vinyl soffit over the aluminum. Uh, uh-huh. it, it has it's the same color all the way through, so it has a tendency to to stay cleaner longer. It's easier uh-huh. to clean than what the aluminum is. Uh, you can use more chemicals on it than what the aluminum does. Um, the other option that you can go back with is instead of vinyl or, or aluminum, you could use uh, Hardy has a soffit panel. Uh, that's uh, more solid uh, than what either the v- vinyl or aluminum are. Um, so if, if you do use the the vinyl, um, I personally like Certain Teed's. Uh, it's called Certain Teed Triple Three and a Third. Uh, it has the most intake ventilation of uh, of any uh, vinyl soffit panel, uh, oh. and the ventilation is hidden, so you don't actually see it. So if you go with uh, the the vinyl, that's going to be my favorite panel. Can I ask you one other question? Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Away from this, actually, if I can get sneak two in, it'd be great. But one especially is this. okay. As it, the house was built in 1992, mm-hmm. I put R30 insulation in it when I bought it, nice. or when I built it, and the uh, R30 is blown in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, is there a time when I just need to have that stuff either uh, more put on it, or that sucked out, and new stuff put in, or what? Yeah, I mean, um, it, you know, it, blown insulation becomes less effective over time. Uh, it's it's really the space between the ins- little pieces of insulation that actually uh, help with uh, resistance of heat transfer. So it does become less effective over time. A lot of time with blown in, you can just add additional over the top of it unless you have – unless like rats have got up there and you have feces and things like that. Uh, otherwise, you can just, you know – uh, blow some more over the top of it. But a lot of times what we'll find, because it, with the uh, law of thermo- thermodynamics, uh, uh, it's uh, 
uh, an R30 is a phenomenal amount of insulation. And so you, let's say that you doubled that and went to an R60. It's not twice as effective. It's only about a percent more effective than what the R30 is. And so uh, you would actually get a better bang for your buck rather than adding additional blown insulation. Many times you actually do better by adding, you know, a layer of uh, uh, of spray foam insulation on the underside of the roof deck, or you do better by adding a radiant barrier or a radiant coating. Um, does, that, or, does that not affect your shingles and by radiating the heat back up underneath the shingles? The the heat radiates up anyways. The average yeah. attic is between 140 and 160 degrees. Guess what? Yeah. The shingles are being baked from underneath anyways. So the difference is is that what happens with, with that heat is that it stays in there for longer periods of time. The good things about the radiant coating or the radiant barrier or the spray foam insulation is the heat's not actually sitting there. So I've seen studies that say that actually it, it ends up increasing the longevity of the roof by keeping the hot air from staying in the attic space. So, um, and even if it does make a difference in, in the life, it's, it wouldn't, it would be a small amount. So. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. And if, if at some point during your program, if you could address the, um, solar, uh, fans for the attic. I'd appreciate it. I can address it right now. How about that? Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, ventilation is key. Uh, getting the hot air out of the attic space uh, is is really important. And the type of ventilation is, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. The, the shape of the house, the size of the house, the type of insulation, the type of intake ventilation like the soffits, the type of existing uh, roof vent that you have. All of those things play into as to which ventilation that we recommend. Many times it is a solar-powered fan, but many times it's not. Many times we recommend something else. And, and uh, as I'm talking to you on the radio, I can't tell you which one is best for your house. Uh, but if you send me some pictures and, and maybe a drawing of your house, then I can tell you which one I would recommend. Actually, John, I think it'd be better if you called the office, set up an appointment. We come out, we evaluate it for free. We'll look at your insulation. We'll look at your ventilation, all these issues that we've talked about. And there's no charge for that. And you can reach us at the office, and it's 407-295-7403. 